Okay, um, a couple of things stand out to me. First and foremost, you're put on this case. You're highly decorated at that time. Um, you're actually a rock star in the DEA. Yes. Were you ever supposed, right. looking back, do you believe you were ever supposed to solve this case? Or did they just say, you know what? We're sending in Hector, highly decorated, and he's going to meet a few stumbling blocks. And at least we could say and write in, on paper in our reports, hey, we sent in the best. He turned up nothing. And case closed. Well, I think they underestimated me. They thought that I basically was going to obey their orders, just concentrate on the Mexican drug lords, go after them, get them arrested, eliminate them, what have you. And that, that, that was a, 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 a show of force that we were not going to basically take uh, the drug lords killing an American agent. However, they thought that because I would be loyal to them, I was not ever going to come back and say, hey, what about the CIA guy? I was told to leave that alone, remember. But I couldn't leave it alone because I knew that the, the, the real intellectual authors came from here, not from Mexico. The intellectual authors of kidnapping and interrogating Camarena did not start with the Mexicans. I thought it started here. Okay. So basically, they underestimated me. They thought that because they would offer me promotions and uh, uh, good positions in Washington, that I would say, okay, boss, I'm, I'm, I'm being taken care of. I just look the other way. But promotions, money didn't mean anything to me. This man was my friend. This man was another Chicano. And I felt his death. He was like me. I thought I wouldn't want nobody to... To, to, to be assigned to my murder investigation and to say, oh, look the other way on this stuff and we'll promote you or what have you. Uh, that I, 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 they, that's where they deem me to be a non-team player. I wasn't a team player because I insisted, what's going on with this part of the investigation? They wanted to divide it, leave that alone, and you just do this. But I couldn't do that. That's where they underestimated me. Okay, so... They did believe you'd come in and you would find your way to these drug lords. They had faith in you. What they didn't yes. see was the fact that above being a DEA agent uh, and a quote unquote team player, you're a human being. You were out there on the front line. You were locking up the bad guys and you believed in the U.S. and everything that it stood for in terms of drug enforcement and law enforcement. And as you were stumbling, because I got to believe that they knew if you get your hands on these drug lords, naturally, you're going to find a link somewhere to DFS. From there, you're going to find a link to Mexican government. From there, you're going to find a leak to somebody in the CIA. Could they be that naive to think that you, somebody who comes from the streets, somebody who fought in wars, somebody who worked his way up through law enforcement, would be a team player and look the other way? That, that just seems almost unbelievable. Well, yes, they un they underestimated me. They thought that, you know, by offering me the comforts of promotions in Washington, the offers of becoming a, a country at the shade, any foreign country that I chose, that because of that comfort, that award, that I would just leave it alone and look the other way. But the, 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 the thing was is that I am a street guy, and what I saw in the streets, I didn't like. What I saw in the streets that I knew because I investigated um, – the, 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 the Danilo Blandone and Freeway Ricky Ross, I knew, I knew that the CIA was bringing in cocaine. I knew that, that, that through Danilo Blandone and Edward Menezes, two contra officials, they were supplying Freeway Ricky Ross with tons of cocaine and that they were basically inundating the inner city, the bloods and the cribs, with cheap crack cocaine. 
So I had already uncovered that before I was assigned to Camp Marina Cave. And I was having trouble doing my job because coming from the streets, coming from the barrio, I grew up with little gangsters and stuff. I grew up with them. I knew them. I, I That's why I was so good. And I felt their the reasons, their, 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 their poverty. I felt, I knew why they went into drug trafficking because they didn't have any ways to basically make, make, make a decent living because they came from drug addicted parents and so forth. They never went to college. They never even graduated from high school. They wanted the car too. They wanted the things too. I understood that. But yet when I find, and I was okay arresting them because they were doing wrong. Mm -hmm. But when I found out that the CIA was inundating and they were bringing in cocaine to our countries, I started doubting doing my job because of saying, I'm arresting this poor Mexican down here with 10 ounces of cocaine. They're giving him in 15, 20 years in prison, making him a felon, ruining his life forever. And these guys are bringing in tons, 10 tons of cocaine and one plane load, and they're saying, leave it alone. I knew that, and I wasn't right with that. So I was already having problems with what is our government doing here? But I did not believe that they would go to the length of killing even an American agent to cover the criminality. That's what I, I struggled with. And I was, because I was a good investigator, that's why they assigned me to that case, because they wanted me. They had to show that somebody was going to pay for Camarena's uh, murder. And they were going to make the drug lords. Okay, the drug lords killed him. So Hector, go after the drug lords. Just, just go over there, go to Mexico, go investigate him, arrest those you can, and those that you, that, that, that you can't arrest, try to eliminate him, what have you. But we have to show a force that we're trying to do something to solve or to basically do away with those Mexicans, those cartel members that killed Kiki Camarena. But in the meanwhile, I found out that our government's involved too. But they tell me, no, leave that alone. Somebody else will investigate that. But I became suspicious when they say, don't write official DEA reports. Well, what was the official? The DEA sixes. De there you go. Report. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. I was ordered not to report anything having to do with DFS or CIA mm -hmm. on DEA sixes, which are official DEA reports. I was told to write everything up on secret memorandums, if, which would if, be forwarded to our inspector general's office and that they would pick up the investigation of the CIA's involvement, involvement excuse me, in Camarena's murder. Now, hold, hold there for one second. And, and I'm only doing the stopping you here for our audience. DEA sixes, they cannot be destroyed as opposed to the memorandums that you were writing. Do I have that correct? That is correct. A DEA six is a, has a has a recorded number on it, and those DEA sixes have to be made available to Congress if if there's a congressional, and 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 the Congress asks to review those those reports, those they have to submit to Congress. So, but when the government is doing something like a black operation or things they don't want Congress to find out about, they order you to write stuff on on memorandums, which are in in inner office memorandums that are top secret. So therefore those Congress will never get a hold of. And that's how they were, they, 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 they asked me to report that. And they told me to report that, that information of the criminality of their involvement, of the CIA's involvement in not only Kiki's murder, but also bringing in drugs, that that stuff should be reported in memorandums. And, and, and only because they told me, because you're not gonna investigate them. That's gonna be the responsibility of the OIG office, Office of Inspector Generals. Those memorandum sector will be forwarded to them for they for them to take action against these 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 Rodriguez's, these, these officials of the CIA that are involved in bringing in uh, drugs and involved in Kiki's murder. I believed him. I believed him. I said fine. So I wrote um, all, all 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 those um, all that information on official memorandums. Now they say they can find them. And now they say that I never wrote them, but guess what? I have evidence that, that I did write them. I have evidence that they received them. And I can prove without a doubt that I wrote everything 
involved in the CIA is involved in drug trafficking and he gets murdered in official uh, in official memorandums. And they received them. Now they can't find them. Nobody knows where they're at. Hector probably never wrote them. Not true. This is what they say now. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.